Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Dr. William Sneblin coming to you from With One Accord Ministries. It's with sadness that uh, I discuss the fact that we have lost two fallen heroes in the last few weeks, uh, Rob Skiba and uh, Russ Dizdar. And we certainly were shocked by this. Um, and I, I know that they were both men of Elohim, of great, great anointing and great courage. And we certainly want to pray for their surviving family members. Um, I personally knew Rob and was privileged to call him a friend. I ministered with him. And I certainly do want to pray for Sheila and his family and exhort you to do the same. And also for Russ Dizdar and his family. And, you know, there are a lot of things like this going on right now. And we need to kind of pay attention to this because the, these particular two brothers, they are fallen heroes just as much as the, um, the men and women that come home draped in flags from war-torn nations serving our country. They are just serving a different king. They are serving the king of kings and they've gone home to glory and we rejoice with them in that, but we're also deeply saddened. So please pray for their families. And that brings me to the critical subject that I want to talk about briefly that is related to this. We are in a difficult month because, of course, October is the month where we start ramping up for Halloween at the end of the month in just a few days. And the, the warfare this time around has really been intense, uh, more so, and we're hearing this from many different ministries and many different, different people that are prayer intercessors and supporters, that it has really just gotten almost amazingly wicked and nasty out there in the spiritual realm where intercessors labor in prayer. And with that in mind, and with these, these tragedies that have happened, I want to share a scripture with you and just give you a brief exhortation. Um, if you go to uh, 1 Timothy in chapter 2, starting in the first verse, Paul says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all who are in authority, that we might lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Okay, now, yeah, the obvious thing of this is we're supposed to pray for our rulers, which is, which is fine, and most believers do that, I hope. But additionally, when it says those in authority, that can also mean those in spiritual authority. And whether you're talking about a, a pastor or a rabbi or someone who is in more of a parachurch ministry such as us, um, all of these kind of individuals, men or women, that, that run either churches or ministries that labor in the vineyard of Yeshua and his gospel, they all need prayer more than ever. And I personally, I just, I, I can't speak for any of you, <clears throat> but I just personally feel convicted that when I, I first heard about Rob's situation, that I didn't pray more for him. I, I immediately put him on the prayer list and prayed for him and his family, but I didn't do it as much as I should have. And I think we need to just step back and look at this for a minute, because this is the army of Yeshua is an army that feeds on prayer, that travels on prayer, that, that, ha, that gets all of its power from prayer. And this is more especially true of leadership. Now, especially, you know, because I know, I know there are thousands of pastors out there and other assorted Christian leaders that that are really good men and women. And, and you know, but they're, they're a, a kind of an elite few of us that are more cutting edge, that are more out there in front, and and both Rob and Russ were those kind of individuals. Their ministries took them to the very edge. And, and of course, you know, Rob with his, his flat earth thing, 
that was very, you know, that took a lot of courage to come out and do what he did with that. And I admired him very much for that, and I have told him so, uh, both on this channel but elsewhere as well. And I think it is important that we understand that when you're out there in the front lines, you are like a lightning rod. And most pastors aren't in that situation. In fact, most pastors don't really have the courage to speak unpopular truths. It's sad to say, but it's true. But for those that do, for those that speak against the devil, that speak against his lies and the false religious system, such as we do here at With One Accord, and that that warn about like things like these coming hell a day, the, the um, Halloween thing, and, and other false teachings, those sort of individuals get the special ire of the kingdom of darkness. And they get, they get, I should say we get, we get a tremendous amount of flack from the enemy, as well as flack from, you know, fellow believers that just don't happen to believe in the same kind of uh, demonology or theology that we do. And that, I mean, you know, they have a right to that, but they also attack us. That I know Rob and Russ both have been getting enormous attacks in the past. And this is unfortunate. That's why we need to pray more for our leaders. We need to pray for those in authority, because that, that means spiritual authority too. Now, I don't happen to know if either... Um, Rob or Russ were actually pastors in the literal physical sense of a, a mortar and brick church. I know Russ had this virtual home house church, which was wonderful, a wonderful ministry. And yeah, people like us are, are, have been given authority from the King of Kings. And, but we need the underpinning of our, of our, the people that think we're doing a good job and want to support us. And yes, it's good to get donations too, but we need prayer more than ever because we are really getting clobbered on almost every level, especially in the last few months. And I, I don't know why it is, but I think it's because we're getting very close to some huge spiritual breakthroughs. And I don't mean just we as With One Accord Ministries, but I mean we as the body of Messiah. And that's why the enemy is pounding us. So we need to get really serious about prayer. Prayer is not a game. Prayer should not be something we do by rote. You know, like, you know, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord, my, that, that kind of thing. I mean, that's okay for especially a child. But what we need to do is just really build up our fortifications. We need to, to armor up every day and spend some serious time in prayer for our leadership, whoever they might be, if it's your pastor or your rabbi, great. If you get if you get fed, if you will, from an online ministry because you can't find anything in your area, pray for them. But please do so because we really need it right now. Uh, we need it more than oxygen, frankly. We need prayer and we need it. Remember, and I want you to remember this, whenever you pray, however briefly, at that moment, you are in the presence of the Father, the King of the universe, and and He is there with you. He is filling you with His Ruach, His Spirit. And the more you pray, the more you experience that. And this is why, for I mean, I I think most of you know we've really, you know, spent a lot of time in this ministry talking about the necessity of prayer and warfare because it's so important. But I, I guess I just want to say what I've said before, encourage people to tithe their time. You know, if you figure that there's 24 hours in a day and you sleep for eight hours, hopefully, you know, then you've got 16 hours. So take 1.6 hours out of your day for Elohim, for Bible study and prayer. And if that means you spend less time on social media or less time watching, you know, TV or whatever, oh well. The church needs to travel on its knees. The church needs to pray and to be conscious in their prayers that they are in the very presence of the living Elohim, Elohim Chaim, and that, that in doing that, they are imbued with power from on high, and they need that. We need that. I need that. Everybody needs that. And the more time you spend in prayer, the more you feel that power. 
and the more we need to feel that power because right now the whole culture is trying to run over us like a steamroller. I mean, you know, whether it's in the political realm or whether it's in the medical realm or whether it's in the the whole thing of, of TV and movies and the way they, they, they you know, treat uh, believers in Yeshua in all these different realms and the way we are attacked, you know, even in America, you know, to say nothing of other countries. It is really appalling, and to get to keep from being demoralized by swimming around in an ocean of filth as we are basically doing now in the modern culture. I mean, you can't turn on a TV, you can't look at you know a lot of stuff on the internet without running into some kind of garbage, even if you aren't looking that way. I mean, I hope you're not, you know, but it, it just pops up and you delete it. But I mean, ugh, you know, it's like you're walking hip deep in a sewer and you need to support yourself and your leadership with more prayer than ever. So please pray about taking more time to immerse yourself in the Bible and to immerse yourself in prayer every single day. I mean, I'm not going to belabor the point, but, you know, I sometimes wonder if if all of us had prayed a little more for these two brethren, if they'd be still be here. I mean, we don't know. I mean, these kind of things are in the hands of the Almighty. Uh, and But I guess what I'm saying is we need to be proactive in our prayers. That's why we try and warn people like about four or five days from now is Halloween. Pray, be prayed up before that holiday, holiday, whatever, and be aware that, that Satanists and witches are certainly praying to their deity and really being very fervent and fasting and doing other unrighteous things that I won't even go into in this video. And so we need to be able to do, as Walter Martin said, we need to be willing to do for the truth what the cults and the occult do for a lie. So if you're, if you, if witches are willing to pray and fast for hours every day before a major feast, we should be able to do that. We should be willing to do that. And if you can't medically for some reason fast in a full sense of the word, then, then do a Daniel fast or, or, you know, fast from some favorite food or, you know, give up coffee for a day or something, you know, whatever you want to do and pray. Pray as if your life depended on it, because believe me, it does. And if 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 you don't pray, you're going to wither on the vine, especially under the 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 torrid blasts of the of the culture that's just pouring down all kinds of satanic garbage on us day in and day out. So please, brothers and sisters, pray for us. Pray for your children more. Pray for your family more. Pray for your community more. And believe me, it will make all the difference in your life. It will change the, your community. It will change your church. Please pray for your leaders, whoever they might be. And above all else, pray for your, your own power and your own strength to endure because things could be kind of weird. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I just know that, that right now it is like a bullseye is on the back of every serious Christian. So, and I don't mean hopefully literally with rifle fire, but I'm talking about spiritual warfare, which is even more dangerous. And so please be prayed up and pray for us, pray for With One Accord Ministries, pray for Mary and I and our families. And we just covet that prayer now more than ever and be armored up and prayed up for the coming Halloween day. Keep your kids safe, keep your pets safe. And just just pray with all your heart. Thank you so much. And I just want to end with a brief prayer. Father, I pray that you would you would comfort the families of of Rob Skiba and Russ Dizdar. I pray, Father, that you would you would hold them in the palm of your hand, wrap them in your powerful tallit of love, your prayer shawl of love, and let them know how much they are loved by you and by us. Father, we also pray that you would instill within the hearts of everybody listening to this video the need to pray more for themselves, for their communities, and for their leaders, whoever those leaders might be. Please, Father, 
fill everybody's heart that's listening to this with a, a new awakening of zeal, a new fire of boldness, a new anointing, Father, for prayer, for intercession, and for high-level spiritual combat. Please, Father, show them the way you want them to go. Let, let them listen to their captain, who is Yeshua HaMashiach. Let them follow him and let him lead us, Father, and let us hear, hear clearly what he wants us to do as this battle intensifies. I pray a blessing upon everybody, a protection during this season, and I just ask you, Father, to bestow your shalom on everybody listening to this prayer. Thank you, Father. We praise you. We give you all the glory in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Bimru Amen. And thank you for your prayers. Thank you for thinking of us also in your gifts. And please, also we would pray that you would subscribe and share this video. Because uh, I think, especially this particular teaching, is needed more than ever. And uh, we thank you for listening. And we thank you especially for your prayers. Shalom, shalom. <laughs>